Okay, so we've got some uh, <coughs> practice questions here to keep you going. Uh, we've got uh, expand or simplify. Um, so we recognize expand means if you've got numbers in front of brackets, timesing. So we end up doing two times that, which will be 2x. And then we do two times this, which will be two times 3y, which will be 6y. Um, best way to do these is to, if you've got an operation going on, is to think of this as positive 4 times these. So positive 4 times this is positive 4x. And positive 4 times a negative y makes negative 4y. So just got to be careful that when you're doing positive 4 times negative 1, because if you've got just a y, it means negative 1, then that will give you negative 4. So we'll end up with negative 4y's. Um, it does say simplify, so we've got to look for like terms. So we've got a term there, term there, term there, term there. Notice, keep the operation with the term to the right so that you can uh, see whether you're adding or subtracting. So here we've got 2x's plus 4x's, which makes 6x's. And then we've got 6y's positive take away 4y's, which will give us 2y positive, so therefore we'll end up with 6x's plus 2y's, because we're left with uh, positive 2y's. Factorise uh, completely, um, so we've got to be careful here, factorise completely means make sure you've found all the common factors. So factorise starts with that word factor, so we're looking for common factors, and we can ask ourselves the question, is it going to be a single bracket or a double bracket? Well, we can see in both of these terms that um, 8 and 12, for starters, both have a factor of 4, so therefore the highest common factor is greater than 1. If the highest common factor is greater than 1 in an expression, then it's a single bracket factorisation. So HCF greater than 1, then single bracket factorisation. So basically when we do a single bracket factorization, we're looking for the highest common factor outside and the uh, divisor is what's left after you've divided each term by the highest common factor inside the bracket. Um, basically these two are the opposite of each other, so uh, we end up uh, seeing what's the common factors. So 8p and 12p. So we can see that uh, 12 and 8 divided by 4, and there's a p in both terms, so 4p will go outside here as well. So if we divide this one by 4p and divide this one by 4p, then we can see what's left, and that goes in here. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, p divided by p is 1, and 2 times 1 is 2. We've got to take away 12 divided by 4 is 3, p divided by p is 1, but we've got a q left, so a q now. So we think the answer is going to be 4p, 2 take away 3q. We've found the highest common factor outside, so we've done the completely bit. Um, we do a check, of course, so 4p times 2 is 8p, yeah, that's what we had originally, and then we've got 4p times negative 3q, positive times negative is negative, and we've got 4 3s are 12, and pq is pq, so take away 12pq. So our check uh, works, so don't forget, check by expanding, and see what happens. Okay, so that's a little bit of algebra to practice. You know there's going to be some in your exams, guys, so make sure you practice it. Okay, so here this uh, question is asking you to find highest common factors and lowest common multiples. So we've got lots of ways we can do this question, but we've got to remember factors go into uh, numbers and leave no remainders. So whole numbers leave no remainders. So they go into. So we'd expect the factors to be smaller than 30 and 42. So we've got... Um, two ways of doing this really. We could write out all the factors of 30 and write out all the factors of 42. Um, that way would work, so for 30 the factors are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15 and 30. Remember all these numbers, all these factors go into 30. <coughs> we can do a check because 1 times 30 is 30, 2 times 15 is 30, 3 times 10 is 30, 5 times 6 is 30. And then we do the same for 42. So 1, uh, 2, 3, um, 6, 7, um, if 3 went in then it must be 14, and if 2 went in it must have been 21, and if 1 went in it must have been 42. So again we pair up, so 1 42 makes 42, 2 21 make 42, 3 14 make 42, and 6 7 make 42. Uh, the question wanted the highest common factor, so we'd look through the lists and find the highest um, factor that's in both. So, because common means in both. So we can see there's a 6 and a 6, 
And when we look through and check, there's nothing higher. That's in both lists. So we'd say here that the highest common factor equals 6. Now that works, um, but it won't always be low numbers like these. So we also need to see the other technique, and that's all about uh, prime factors. So it's worth practicing uh, this method as well. So remember the prime factors, we look for prime numbers that go into something. So 2 is into 30, it goes 15 times. 3 is a prime number into 15, goes 5 times, and 5 is a prime number anyway. Um, 42, 2 goes in, and um, 2 is the first prime number, and the only even prime number, remember? So 2 goes into 42, 21 times. 3 goes into 21, 7 times, and 7 is a prime number. So we can see here that uh, these are quite straightforward product of primes. So 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. And 42 is 2 times 3 times 7. And we can do this in several ways. We can pair up, and we can see that those two factors are both in both lists. So the HCF would be 2 times 3, which is 6. Um, it's useful to obviously practice the Venn diagram technique as well because that again allows you to practice uh, several skills in one go. So these were the 30 factors and these were the 42 factors. Um, so for 30 and uh, 42, the common ones go in the intersection, so that was 2 and 3. From 30 we were left with 5 and from 42 we were left with 7. And basically the intersection of the two numbers is going to be the highest common factor. So again, we can see 2 and 3, so 2 times 3, also 6. So lots of ways. And if this question said to do the lowest common multiple of um, 30 and 42, then we simply take all the numbers that are in the Venn diagram in the two circles. So we'd be doing 5 times 2 times 3 times 7, 10, 30, 210. Okay, the question only asks for a highest common factor, but just to remind you, if you want to lowest common multiple, you can use the Venn diagram technique as well. So this question does ask you for the lowest common multiple of these two numbers. So I am going to do the Venn diagram method. So we are going to do the prime factors of 30. So 2, 15, 3, 5. And for 45, um, 3 goes in there 15 times, 3 goes in there 5 times, and both of those are prime numbers. So the Venn diagram says that if we take the prime factors of 30 and 45, put the common ones in here, so we can see that there's a 3, a 3, a 5, and a 5. So 3 and a 5 goes in there. From 30 we're left with 2, and from 45 we're left with 3. Um, so the lowest common multiple is the multiplication of the numbers that are in the Venn diagram. So 2 times 3 times 5 times 3. Uh, 2 3 is a 6, times 5 is 30, times 3 is 90. So the lowest common multiple equals 90. Now the other technique for this is just like the highest common factor really, uh, factors mean going to, so multiple means multiply, so it's what are the multiples of these two numbers. So we could have written out the 30 times table, 30, uh, 60, 90, 120. We could have written out the 45 times table, 45, 90. Uh, 135, and then we notice that the lowest number in both types tables is 90. So either way, we've got the answer of 90. But as I say, the numbers won't always be as low as these, so it's worth learning the prime factor method, and then uh, do the Venn diagram because you can see from that quite quickly what the lowest common multiples are and what the highest common factors are. Okay, so that's uh, a run through of highest common factor and lowest common multiple. Um, here we've got one of those um, problem questions where there's lots of information and you know, you've got to work your way through it. It's worth four marks, so obviously it's worth spending some time on it. So we think about the you what for these long uh, problems so that we can try and think through. So we're going to underline uh, what is the key information. So crowd training, so two websites selling train tickets, each of the websites had a credit card charge. So the ad, a credit charge share, and a booking fee. All right, so rail tickets. Credit charge charge is 2.25% and the booking fee is 80 pence. Cheap trains, credit charge is that and booking fee is that. Okay, so Nadia wants to buy a train ticket. The ticket price is £60 on each website, so that's important. And Nadia will pay by credit card. Okay, so will it be cheaper for Nadia to buy the train? Right, okay. So that's the underlying identified key information. So basically we've got to find it, will it be cheaper? Um, so literally, we then ask ourselves, what do we know? Okay, so what do we know? Well, let's do page in half. 
rail tickets, and cheap trains, tell the examiner clearly what we're doing. And as it's about comparing two things, we might as well uh, can't spot trains today. Okay, so we've got to do a credit charge of 2.25%. So that's going to be 2.25%. Well, that's equivalent to 0 0.0225. So in terms of um, working out the credit charge, then we're going to do 0. Point. Now remember how to get that, you have to divide by 100. So that means all of this moves down twice. So the 2 started there. So down twice to that. And then after the other digit moves along with it. So we're going to do 0.0225 times the 60 pounds. Now this was actually on a non-calculated paper. So you've got lots of ways you can try and do this. You could do 225 times 60. Um, Personally, I'd probably think of this in a slightly easier way. I would actually do 1%, which means we're going to divide 60 by 100. So that's going to be 60 pence. Uh, so if I do 60 divide by 100, um, that gives me 0 0.6, and that's 60p. So 2% is going to be £1.20, so 120p. And 0.25 is a quarter of a percent. And so therefore we need to have a quarter of 60p, and that's 15p extra. Um, so altogether then it was 120, 180, 195 pence. So that's the credit charge. So again, tell me exactly what you're doing. And then there was a booking fee. So we have to add on the booking fee. So that's adding on 80p. So I can see from here that 80p. Um, so altogether then, uh, £2.75. So 275 pence, £2.75 to pay extra. It's basically saying, will it be cheaper? So we have to work out the um, charges because the ticket price is £60, whatever. So cheap trains is 1.5%. Um, so 1% we've already decided is 60p because we did £60 divide by 100 which was 0 0.60 and then it goes 60p. We want one and a half percent, so we need another half percent, which will be 30 pence, so 1% 60, half that 30p. So that's 90 pence, so that's the credit charge. So again, tell the examiner what we've done. And we're going to add the booking fee. So we've got to add on the booking fee. And on this one, it was £1.90, which is a little bit dearer. So altogether then, that's £2.80. So we compare these, because that's what the question wanted. And we can see that it was just slightly cheaper to buy it from rail tickets. Because it says, will it be cheaper for Nadia to buy? So we've got to remember to actually answer the question itself. So A, answer the question. Um, so basically, we're going to say um, cheaper to buy um, from rail ticket by 5p. Okay, so again, we've done the underline, we've asked ourselves what do we know, we didn't need to help ourselves because we'd already got the information to work with, we've answered the question, now we've got to test does it make sense, um, £2 um, to buy a train ticket on a website, not unreasonable, uh, if we'd have come out with £275 or we'd have made a mistake here of thinking this is £195, then uh, I hope you'd you ask yourself the question, I'm not going to pay more than the ticket price for uh, this. Um, so yeah, it, it would seem reasonable that we're working with these kind of prices. And then we go through and tick off to make sure have we used all the information. Yeah, we use that, we use that, we use that, we use that. We went for £60. We have answered the question. Um, so therefore we should get all four marks. Okay, so last question for today. And we're going to look at uh, maps and scales and bearings. So we've got a, a diagram shows part of a map. Excuse me. Um, it shows the positions of a castle and a church. So yeah, and we've got a scale here of one to ten thousand. So what we've got to remember is that this means because uh, ratio, it's been given as a ratio, and it's telling you that one centimeter on the map is equal to ten thousand centimeters in real. We then uh, read the question. It wants the answer in meters. So we know that one meter is equal to a hundred centimeters. So we're going to divide this by a hundred. So one centimeter is going to equal 
Uh, divide by 100 there, and we're going to move it down twice, so it's 100 metres. So, okay, so it's been tried, we've been told it's a scale map, so it's been drawn accurately. So, we get our ruler, and it wants the distance between the castle and the church, so 8 centimetres exactly. And always wise to draw the line as well, because we might need it for something else. Okay, so it's eight centimeters on the drawing. And we've seen here that the scale is one centimeters worth 100 meters. So we're gonna do eight times 100, which is gonna be 800. So the answer here is gonna be 800 meters. Okay, and then the question goes on and says, find the bearing. Now, we gotta remember about bearings. And bearings, we've got to remember, are always measured from facing north, where north is not 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 degrees, always three digits um, for bearings, where three digits before the decimal point. And basically we're measuring in a clockwise direction, that's really important when we do bearings. And we measure the angle turned. And if it's less than 100 degrees, then we always put O in front to make it three digits. Okay, so let's have a look. It's, it wants the bearing of the castle from the church. So the from bit is telling you where you stood. So you stood at the church. Um, so basically we're stood here and we're going to use a protractor to measure the angle. Now, again, the key, one of the key things about the angles is when you're measuring bearings is that you must line zero up with north. and you always measure in a clockwise direction. That's really important. And we come round and we can see here that um, we've got 129 degrees. So we turned 129 degrees. Now that's already three digits, so we don't need to add anything else on there. So the answer here will be 129 degrees, bearing off three digits given. Okay, so we go back through, make sure we've done what the question wanted. So, Church Prison Castle Church, scale, yeah, we recognise the scale, the ratio, so the units have to be the same. So, we start off with one centimetre worth 10,000 centimetres. Then, we will ask the question in metres, so we convert it into metres, measured accurately, and got 800. So, we've done that. And we've measured the bearing from the church, and we've got an answer of 29. Okay, so that was a question involving scale and bearings.